Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that, y'all. Um, so um, we're going to start with a, I'm going to start with a centering practice that um, is based out of somatics. And somatics is a healing modality that, um, that encourages one to get to know as well as honor the wisdom of their body and how they came to um, be how they came to exist up until this point, essentially. Um, and so I'm going to guide us in that. And it's actually going to be a, a stretching based centering exercise. All of these um, practices welcome all bodies. So I'm going to show the, st the standing version, but you are so uh, welcome to stay seated if that's more comfortable with you. And I'll just tell the modified versions. If you want to stand, And if somebody could give a, a thumbs up if you can still hear me. Cool, I had to take my headphones out, so I just want to make sure. Awesome, um, so you can just make a little space for yourself um, in your home. And again, you can either stay seated or you can join me in standing up. Um, if you stay seated, um, your posture should be like a little bit upright, but not like super like, I got the solo in the church choir upright, but like just, you know, you don't have to be like super erect but just kind of like not slouching back too much. Um, and then if you're standing, you, you can go ahead and stand about your feet hip width apart. And the invitation for everybody right now, let me make sure I'm not skipping anything before I, you know what, I am skipping something. Um, I just want to tell y'all, you know what, since we already started, I'll come back. I always want to just share um, history and legacy that, uh, my wisdom comes from and honor those people. Uh, but I will do that afterwards since we already started. Um, ancestors ain't gonna be mad. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so here we go. Um, for everyone, I encourage you to just go ahead and just sort of shake out, just shake out any tension that you feel. You can roll your shoulders. And I invite you to flex your hands like this. We're gonna start with some energy moving in our hands. And go ahead and start flexing your feet. You can flex them like this. And you can roll your ankles around one at a time. Just bringing aliveness to the extremes of our bodies, the top and the bottom. You can join me by tapping on the top of your head. Start to bring some energy and aliveness all the way to the top. And I promise you it's not Simon Says, but at the same time, go ahead and start stomping your feet. And we're doing a few things here. We're bringing aliveness to the top and the bottom, but we're also uh, awakening. We're creating a through line as well. And you can let that go. Um, <clears throat> if you'd like, you can join me by taking a palm of your hand and placing it a couple inches below your belly button right your your thumb should be pretty much like where your belly button is and the rest of your hand a couple inches below that this is our center it's the centermost point of the human body it is also uh the space um that um we sort of project actors project their voice from singers project their voice from and it's the place that we can always come back to to give ourselves um, a moment to pause, to give ourselves some options, to figure out, you know, how do I want to handle this situation? And um, we're also, this is also called a centering practice. So it, it evolves around here and everything we do is going to radiate out from this point. So if your knees are locked, if you're standing up and your knees are locked, make sure they're kind of loose, that you're not um, cutting off that blood supply there. Um, and everyone can just go ahead and loosen their jaw a little bit. And let's go ahead and drop into our sensations. The invitation here is to just take note of anything that's happening in your body on the sensational level. So that's temperature, that's um, an itch, there's comfort, discomfort. Um, I'm going to be quiet for a moment so you can scan your body and just just see what sensations you're experiencing. Are you hot? Are you cold? And 
And now we're gonna move on to the emotional level. And for all of these, please, no bad and no judgment. If you pick up something that you're feeling, um, you know, just give it some love, just give it a breath. You don't have to say, damn, I'm still anxious from this morning or whatever it is. Just say, welcome anxiety. Hey girl, hey, whatever it is. Um, so go ahead and scan your body for any emotions that may be swirling inside you at this moment. <clears throat> Excellent. Now we're going to center in our length. This is our vertical uh, meridian. It is our dimension of dignity. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to center in the bottom part of our dignity, which is our lower half of the body. And it's also the humility portion of dignity. Uh, we define dignity as the combination of confidence plus humility. And so we're just going to get into the humility part. Um, you can go ahead and bend at the waist and let your arms dangle. Even if you're sitting, you can kind of bend over your lap and just let your arms just dangle there. You don't have to like touch your toes or anything. You don't have to do a hard forward bend. Just feel the arch of your back. Let your arms dangle loosely. You might feel a little bit in your hamstring and that's good. It's reminding you of your humility and plasticity. And we're looking at the earth. Happy Earth Day, by the way. We're looking at the earth and it's not a coincidence. This humility is grounding us. It's taking us back to our source, this planet that we get to take care of. And let's go ahead and start rolling up vertebrae by vertebrae. And we're gonna keep going up as we sit upright or stand upright and take your arms and press them up to the sky and go ahead and reach like you're grabbing for apples. And now we're playing with the confidence part of our dignity. This is the, the part of our existence that says, you have a place here, you belong here. You have a voice, you have a vote. And y'all know, what does Solange say? A seat at the table, okay? Now go ahead and bring your arms back down and just try to feel as tall as you were and as long as you were when your arms were up and center in your dignity. This beautiful thing, dignity is the capacity to ask for something, and to respond to something. To offer an apology and to ask for an apology. It's a skill to do both. Excellent. And now we're gonna stretch wide. We're gonna get a little bit wider in our width, our horizontal meridian. So you can uh, bring your feet a little bit further apart if you're standing. You can uh, widen your knees a little bit if you're sitting. Go ahead and do that man spread. Now is the only time we're gonna condone that. Just widen up, widen that chest a little bit. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is extend from our center to our outsides. So now we're like spreading out our bodies and our energy. And our width is our dimension of connection. This, this thing that we need as humans, we need each other, we need touch, we need connection. So let's go ahead and spread it beyond uh, just our own selves and take it out in our light stretching and get that wingspan going. And give it some good breaths there. This pose is like the, this is a, a, a big yes pose. And we're just practicing a big yes pose. And go ahead and spread that energy across your, if your arms get tired, you can drop them, not a competition. You can still feel as wide. 
and spread that energy to the inhabitants of your home, your building, your block, your city, your town. And just picture the people in your immediate environments that you're sending energy to, that you're connecting to. Excellent. And see how comfortable, this is a lesson in comfort as well. Maybe this is incredibly comfortable for you. You're used to saying yes, and maybe you have a hard time saying no. For others, this may be very uncomfortable. That's okay, we're gonna practice the other way in a moment. Keep spreading, and now we're going to take it back out, and we're gonna start rolling in slowly. Start rolling that wingspan in, just as our feathered relatives with their wings. And go ahead and give yourself a big squeeze. Now this is the extreme no pose. This, so our width is, is the, our dimension of connection, but it's also the dimension of our sacred boundaries. Praise it. Boundaries are so essential for everybody's safety. So we're just practicing the extremes of this. And now for some of us, this is very uncomfortable. For others, this is very comfortable. If you find yourself saying no a lot, hesitant, taking a while to respond to people, maybe this is something you carry, this type of pose you carry energetically. For others, maybe it's very uncomfortable. So what we're gonna do now is just let that go and find what's a good balance for you. What's a good center for you within this width? And give it some breath there. Make any adjustments you need. Excellent. Now we're gonna center in our depth. I invite you to take a palm again, place it a couple inches below your belly button. And that other hand, go ahead and place the back of that palm on your lower back. So now you're kind of squeezing your torso front and back. And we're gonna extend uh, from our center to our back and we're gonna start rolling our shoulders back. Our back, our literal back, and also this is the dimension of our past and what's at our back, our survivorship, what we've come through, what we've gone through and not just us, but also our ancestors. So now for this stretching, we're going to uh, do a little gratitude prostration pose. So I'm gonna turn to the side so y'all can see me. Um, you're gonna put your, and again, this is, if you're seated, same thing. You're gonna put your uh, forearms up like this. Fall, your palms should be flat towards the ceiling. And you're gonna push straight up. And then you're just gonna lean back like just a few degrees. There's one more piece to this. Drop your head back between your shoulders and open your jaw like you're catching a raindrop in your mouth. And jaw closed, head back up, arms back down. Give it a breath. We're gonna do another round or two of that. And essentially what we're doing, I'll face y'all again, is just like um, sort of surrendering to, to what's behind us, what's at our back, what's at our past. Um, under, with the premise of, we have so much information and wisdom already. You know, in a culture that tells us, keep improving, buy this, keep buying, uh, keep achieving, goal setting. Uh, we also wanna remember to reflect and to honor what we've been through and what our ancestors have been through. So let's go ahead and we're gonna deepen that a little bit more. Um, forearms up, palms flat towards the ceiling. Push them up, all the way extended towards the ceiling. And just lean your head back, lean your back back and head back and mouth open. You can take a breath, move your head back and arms down. Excellent. And finally, our final pose, 
Um, we're going to center in uh, what's ahead of us, our commitments, what we care about, um, and our future. And we're going to do this by extending our hands like this. We're going to cross one hand over the other. And we're going to just, um, essentially, we're kind of arching our back, but we're like, it's, all, it's like we're stretching out in front of us. Yep. Mm hmm And you can feel it in your deltoids back here. That's good. Keep breathing. And let the strong pose go. And let's do a softer forward pose. You can let it go. Just take your hands and push like this. You can do another cycle if you want, and you're just gonna push forward. And essentially what we're doing right now is, um, you know, what we pay attention to is what we manifest, and our body is evidence of that. If, if you know, for those who are like, ah, that's kind of hokey, our body is evidence. So, um, you know, you hear of um, when there's a car accident and other drivers drive past and rubberneck, and they're looking at the accident, they end up going towards the accident. Um, another example of um, in sports where you're trying to aim something, it's helpful to point there first. That's why Babe Ruth would point. I mean, he was being cute, but he was also kind of setting his body up to follow what it was focused on. There's a lot of sports that have that example. I won't go into it. I ain't gonna jack out on y'all, but essentially pointing to where you want to head. So same thing, even when we're talking about our social, emotional lives, fo that focus there. And picture in front of you what you most care about, who and how you most wanna be during these times and in general. One more good breath. And let's drop that. Excellent, y'all. And we are maybe a little bit more centered in our width. I mean, our length, our width, our depth, and uh, what's ahead of us. And now we're going to, I'm going to pause and take any questions before we get into our cranial massages. If you're standing, you can come back to seated. I wanted to give some legacy shouts to um, Part of, and part of the legacy is also um, just boosting my own self-confidence. Sometimes I'm like, I'm not a certified yoga instructor, instructor. Why am I teaching stretching? Then I remember I have 37 years as a competitive soccer player. So I have stretched and I stretch all the time more than I could even imagine. Um, it's compulsory now because I just like feel kind of stiff all the time, especially with all the added stress that's happening with the pandemic. So that's one piece of legacy. Um, and I consider soccer a way of life, not a sport. Um, I'm also pulling a little bit from Eastern medicine. So shouts to our API siblings, um, just in terms of yoga is just like a deep way of life also, uh, traditionally anyway, um, and, and also the chakra system. Um, so thanks to that. I'm pulling from black and African radical traditions of um, ancestral reverence, um, everything from feet washing to getting the Holy Ghost, that's all a part of this practice and all a, all a part of the practice. Um, indigenous medicine, specifically those of Turtle Island or uh, what we now call the U.S. Um, and that, that's informed by like the connection and the, and the tutelage or the training that we get from our animal kingdom siblings as well as the planet. Um, and there was a lot around the width and birds that I could say, but I was just trying to keep it more brief. Uh, brief. Um, I actually have like, like when I'm doing black somatics or indigenous somatics, I actually have very specific ways of doing a centering that, um, you know, if it's a multiracial space, I'll just do more a generic one. Um, but also pulling, pulling from indigenous ceremonies like um, tear ceremonies, pipe ceremonies and sweat lodges, all of that informs my work um, and my experience. And then somatics, thank you for the question. Um, I have been training up with uh, generative somatics for the past six to seven years. I need to do the math. Um, as well as Black Organizing for Leadership and Dignity, uh, which stands which short for BOLD. And uh, those are two orgs that take um, oftentimes either grassroots organizers who want to have a, uh, 
a healing justice piece and a healing personal healing piece to their work um or they also accept politicized practitioners which means like counselors therapists psychotherapists that want to get a little bit more politicized um so those are the those are the folks in the organizing bodies that i root from if you if you're interested in learning more about somatics or or receiving more somatics coaching or trainings um please um you know just send me a message uh on the chat privately or um i think everyone probably has someone can drop my email address in in the chat for me that'd be great um one of my colleagues uh yes yeah, so thank you that's that's what i'm pulling from before we do the cranials i want to say um you'll need um at least one thing is i encourage everyone to either go wash their hands now or to grab some hand sanitizer and get with it so we're going to just pause for a few minutes for people to oh wait before y'all leave one more thing and if you have if you have any essential oil that you want to use for on your temples or anything please bring it i'm going to give a little uh, disclaimer or two before we use it but if you don't have it it's all good it's you can just kick it up a notch if you do have it. So go ahead and get your goods. Um, so all of these things we're about to do, you can, of course, we're gonna do them on ourselves now. You can also do them on other people, including children. I do it on my nephews all the time, especially if they're having, um, they are just like really hyperactive or having a hard time sleeping. So um, this is a gift that keeps on giving. You can, even on babies, um, I know there's some parents of really little children in the house as well. Um, so it looks like most people are back. Who's that? Uh, okay, that's our staff person. So I'll go ahead and start. Sweet. So um, uh, everyone's got their hand washed. Okay, so my, my disclaimer about the essential oils is that um, you have to really know yourself if your skin can handle it straight from the bottle mine can uh some people's skin is sensitive so you want to dilute this in water um i probably should have said that so you could get some water <laughs> but um if it, does anybody have essential oil with them yeah, hold it up if you do wave your essential oil in the air and wave it like you just don't care hey that's gonna be the wellness concert y'all um sweet okay so if y'all know you can handle it we're gonna go ahead and apply otherwise please mix it with some water to preserve your skin. Um, if you're doing it straight from the bottle, you can just dab a little bit. We're gonna spread it on our uh, index finger. Mostly the only fingers we're gonna, uh, no, we'll probably use both all hands, but mostly we're gonna be using the middle index finger and our thumb for a lot of these. So you can spread the oil there. And um, in terms of which kind of oils, I, um, I'm using the lavender. Lavender is calming. I mostly only use uh, three types of oil for these things, which are either lavender for calming, peppermint for soothing, or eucalyptus, or I'm sorry, peppermint for um, awakening and getting thoughts going. And same thing with uh, eucalyptus is both, you know, it, it helps with your, um, your breathing and your lung health and ENT stuff, ear, nose, and throat, but it also, um, yay, peppermint. Um, but it also, doo -doo -doo. yeah, also kind of is, is sort of like a refreshing uh, thing. I haven't, tea tree is real strong for the face. Um, and then there's, of course, a whole host of other oils out there. Um, but those are kind of the main three I work with. If you're using a eucalyptus or peppermint, I see you, Ames. Hey, Mr. Simmons. Um, I want you to be very careful around your eyes. Lavender's okay because it's light, but the peppermint and the eucalyptus, Please be careful for some of the um, eye, getting close to your eyes. Um, if you're wearing glasses, now's the time to take them off so you can access your whole face. And we're going to start with, and yeah, uh, my colleague Al dropped um, a list, a uh, let yeah, me roll up, uh, of, of the five stretches we're going to, or the five massages we're going to do today. Um, so the first one we're going to do is um, the third eye spread. So you want to take both of these fingers you can follow me. You're going to put it here in what many cultures call the third eye or the pineal gland. A lot of folks believe this is sort of the source of our, like the culmination of our intuition. So we're going to just start there, put some pressure, and then you're going to just roll down through the temple. Now for this one, you're going to come out at the top, top of your ear. So you're going to come and just 
roll across the top of y'all ear, your ear. And for all these, just some intentional deep breaths are always nice. And let's just do one more round of that. Excellent. Um, for this next one, we're going to do tempo roll. For folks who um, maybe saw the GIF that was used as part of the advertisement for this webinar, I want to shout out Liz is just so awesome, my coworker who's in this chat and creating that GIF. And hopefully, we're going to make some gifts for all of these so that people would not have had to be on this webinar to learn these stretches. Um, but so the next one uh, is the one that was featured in the gift, temple roll or rolling temple. Same two fingers there. I'm going to put them on those temples and go ahead and just apply pressure and roll forward about 15 times. When you stop your rolling, don't move your hands yet. I'm going to give one more set of instructions. When you're done with your rolls, now just squeeze in and apply a little pressure. And on the count of three, one, two, three, release, release, release. And go ahead and just feel for a moment. Feel your head recalibrate to that pressure, to that love. I want to talk a little bit about this place in our heads as well. This is the um, um, inside of our brain there is right here. It's called the BRCA nerve, <clears throat> which regulates speech. And, um, and actually this whole frontal lobe regulates higher order thinking, executive functioning. Um, and so, so many things that we say are not a coincidence. So when you're like, let me think about it, you actually are helping your brain bring uh, um, um, articulation and diction online so that it can come out your mouth, you know, so you have thoughts kind of all over and then doing this actually does help um, coagulate those thoughts. Um, and also that pose, the thinker pose, you know, like this, it's also, it's actually legit. Like this is sort of what's happening in that part of our brain. One last thing I'll share about that is um, if you're in a heated argument with a loved one, maybe a partner or something, you're like, I feel like you're just not listening to me. They're probably not. I mean, not that they're not listening, just that if you guys are really triggered and really up in um, your um, intense feelings, uh, a, a lot of this functioning up here shuts down. And what's happening is hyperactivity back here in the vagus nerve and in the um, uh, amygdala and the trauma part of our brain that I'll talk about in another pose. But just, you know, to just land some of these stretches in real life examples, um, if you're in a heated argument with Coworker, loved one, whoever, um, take a moment and just give yourself a little love here to bring to, to sort of soothe these racing thoughts and also to help articulation come back. Um, we're gonna move to the cheek roll. Okay, so cheek roll. We're gonna take both hands like this. Awesome. Um, we're going to take the thumbs right in the cheeks. Put these eight fingers here on the side of the head. And we're gonna let, uh, we're actually gonna roll with the thumbs and le use these as anchors. So go ahead and, and now you gotta open your mouth to do this because you gotta get right inside the jawbone. So I like this. Yeah, ooh, that feels so good. Go across the whole circle of your jawbone. And let's do about three more. One, two, three, release. Just feel the energy. Our jaws carry so much for us, y'all. Um, it's, a, it's a very active, actually we started with this um, ocular we're going to get back to the ocular band 
there's tension bands throughout our bodies where we carry our tension. There's an the ocular band, there's the jugular band. Um, essentially, your jaws, a lot of, most all of us have a response to our traumas in our jaws, which looks like either subconsciously gnawing our teeth, whether asleep or not, or even kind of like, especially um, folks who have a hard time expressing feelings, maybe because they're hypermasculine or other reasons, you'll see this happening. You'll see them like biting on their teeth, like about to explode, but nothing's coming out the mouth, but you see activity happening. I do allow men's work. So that's pulling from that a little bit. Um, you know, I'm like, how are you? I'm fine, but you see this going, that little bind, you're like, okay, mm -hmm, you're fine. Um, also, um, or folks compulsively smile. You ever seen anybody say, oh, it's awful. I'm doing awfully, you know? That's also a trauma shape. That is that person's way of saying, if I smile, that's gonna keep me safer. Some of these are arranged around race and class, as you might imagine, not always though. So um, just wanna bring attention. So our jaws carry a lot. So giving that some love as much as possible is gonna be huge. Let's move on to our Temple Vegas pull up. Pull up, pull up, pull up. All right, so this was one of my favorites. This is like my favorite. So um, we're gonna do this one with, let me remember. Yes, so it starts like this. This is why we're gonna make these gifts so y'all can remember. <laughs> um, and then you go backwards. Uh, thumbs on the temples. The rest of these eight fingers, if you have eight fingers, um, are gonna uh, grab, grasp the back of your head. Let me see, can everybody see? Somebody say, somebody with audio say yes if you can see the back of my head. Yes, we see you all day. Awesome, cool. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you from the back at first and then I'll turn around. So what you're gonna do essentially is just pull up. Yeah, now let me show you how it looks on the temple. I'm pulling up. Uh-huh. It's like you're trying to pull the top of your head up. Real, uh, and pressure, you should, you know, so it's not light. It's not just like that. You make sure you put some pressure in there um, for all 10 fingers if you have them. Oh yeah, so you could almost see your eyebrows coming up like this if you're in front, yep. Oh my God, this is my fave, y'all. So there's a few things happening on this one. I'll explain after. I get my blessings. Whew. Excellent. Um, if you're doing that on someone else, it's like you have to be over them kind of, and yeah, you pull them towards you like that. Mm -hmm. Whew. Let's just breathe that one out for a moment. <clears throat> <clears throat> I love that one. So what's happening there is we're, we're giving this BRCA nerve and that sort of part of the executive functioning some love, but we're also simultaneously giving that the back of our head right there where it starts to curve up. That is where um, our fight or flight um, mechanism exists. That is also the first part of our brain that is developed when we're in utero. And it's the first part of our brain that was developed as a species. It's the part of our brain that we share with other primates. It's the part of our brain that, you know, the whole fight or flight is just functions to keep us safe and for our survival. Um, and it doesn't have rational reason, which is why when you're triggered and this part of the brain is activated, it's not logical. You can't think or speak logically. And so that's okay. <laughs> and just wanna, you know, um, just as an aside, um, it's okay not to be rational and ha have everything makes sense um sometimes um that's it's it's not you actually it's your species <laughs> it's not you it's your species um but so that so doing both of those at the same time is really just kind of like you know both um s smoothing out the nervous system but also kind of um um again creating that through line of like this this would be offline if if you were really triggered and this would be active and so giving both love kind of makes them both balance out and be equally active in sort of a stabilizing way. Um, also just feels good. Uh, the final one we'll do. Um, let's see. Okay, cool. Um, the final one is um, frontal vagus compression. Um, I also love now this, 
is what you're going to get you to sleep. If you um, have sleep issues, this is really, really awesome to do on other people too. You can do it. If you're doing it on yourself, I'll show you that in a moment if you're trying to sleep. But let's, um, so similar to the last one where we're giving energy to both our prefrontal cortex as well as our um, amygdala or our vagus nerve, we're going to cover. And then this is, I'm glad I mentioned the ocular band. It's not just this. Make sure you cover your eyebrows because we really want to get into that ocular band. And then the other hand, you're going to just cover it, the, the, the back of your head, same place where it starts to curve up, and just go ahead and give it some pressure. Now, you don't have to squeeze in so hard where you're like, it's a workout, but just even just holding it here. If you're trying to sleep, so say the pillow's right here. You want to lay one arm on the pillow. This one will kind of be awkwardly up, but it's actually not too bad. Um, and that compression, again, just does that same function, smoothing things out, recalibrating the nervous system. And I have put wily, rambunctious 11 and 13 year olds to sleep doing this with their consent. Whew. And let it go. Feel it. <sighs> mm. Awesome. And that completes our five short stretches. We've got about 10 more minutes to take some questions. Um, if folks have any, feel free to come off mute or type them in the chat. <clears throat> Hey, everybody want to take a nap now. <laughs> also, if you're having a hard time coming off mute, some at times we have a little technical glitch that um, sort of stops everybody from doing that. So just give me a wave and I'll make sure that you can unmute yourself. Hmm. Or if there you go, here you are. Great questions. Um, you're so welcome, Aida. I love you. Um, and then to your question, Lucas, let me go grab a book real quick. Hold on. For a second, I forgot about technology and that we can just drop these books in the chat, which can happen as well. But just want to show you this book is like one of my Bibles or Qurans or Torahs, if you will. Uh, the Body Keeps the Score is incredible. It starts off talking about um, really intense uh, psychiatry and um, psychotherapy and brain science, uh, which is also my original training. And then I ran from that world, um, but I keep some of it. And then the author then goes on into, he doesn't really name somatics, but essentially like uh, body practices and things like that. This is an excellent book. It's got diagrams, diagrams of the brain um, when traumatized, like, you know, I was saying like, this goes offline and this is hyperactive. There's actually pictures that show, oh, you're recalling a traumatic event, whoop, shut down. You know, this part shuts down, this other part shuts on. It's an excellent book. Another one is, um, I actually just started this. I don't, I haven't read it all, but this is the ED of generative somatics. Um, she wrote this, Stacey Haynes, um, The Politics of Trauma. So this is about healing and trauma, but also about how it, the intersection of grassroots organizing and leftist organizing, um, queer and trans people of color organizing in the service of healing justice and vice versa. And then there's a ton, a ton of websites also. Um, so any of those keywords I've said before, um, uh, neuroscience, uh, somatics, um, the vagus nerve, um, it, it, Googling any of those could lead you to a rabbit hole of um, some incredible things about, about our species. Um, we really are, um, one, one thing, I, uh, speaking of our species, I want to name that I sometimes say when we're centering is just that we are the only species in the entire animal kingdom that, that moves in the world with all of our vital organs exposed, you know, so all of the head, 
the heart, the lungs, every other species either crawls or walks, you know, on all four down in some way. So all that's covered or they swim down in that way or they slither down in that way. Um, or our feathered friends have a whole wing system to cover all of this. So we, when we, uh, even our primate uh, siblings, uh, cousins, they still are down, right? So when we decided to evolve upright bipedal beings, or however you believe we came to be humans, um, we were necessarily opening ourselves up for trauma and resilience though. You know, it's a, it's a well-oiled system. So we don't just, you know, evolve to something that will just harm us. Um, so yes, we're, we're made for trauma, but we're also made for resilience. So I just want to drop that part in too.